Hey guys, super exciting video. This is the HK, as you can see, right there. And then also, as you can see, 416, super legit, 100% real deal. This is, uh, without a doubt, awesome. And I'm lying. It's not a 416, but it is the closest thing that regular humans can get. It is the MR223. This is the new all ambi version, which is the MR223A3, patterned after the new 416 a5s super cool still super awesome it doesn't say 416 here but otherwise it is very similar right down to the hard chrome barrel which is which is nice and anyways i'm going to talk real quick tip to tail about this thing today a little bit about the ergs a little bit about why i think it's neat and some of the random things that i think about on the way so first of all while it says 223 you can shoot 556 five, this is simply a european gun canada where i am gets the European HK stuff, whereas US gets the US stuff. In USA, they, they always say the you know, MR556, the MR762. We get the 223 and the 308. Why that is, I don't know. However, I don't think that the USA has the new A5 pattern guns yet. So the, they don't have a 556A3 or 762A3, but, but we do in Canada, so suck it. I'm kidding, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, eh? But we're going to talk about this gun nonetheless, and... For the sake of all gun owners out there, I really hope that HK ships more of these things and the guys in the States get them, because these are super cool, and I just love this thing. Also, RAL 8000, guys. This is like the German FDE. Looks really cool. I really like it. Okay, well, we're going to talk about back to front. So, this buttstock. Slimline, lighter weight, thinner profile than before. Then you've got this hefty castle nut. The reason for this thing is... Allegedly, when you had the stock fully collapsed before and you dropped it, well, that put a lot of pressure on the connection, the threaded connection in here could cause damage. HK responded by doing this super chonky boy, and now it protects that connection. So this, when you drop this, it can't get as much leverage on it. That's the, uh, that's the math behind it, I guess, or the science behind it. So next up, we got this grip. Grip is a little, this is the, you know, HK's grip, and it has got some nice texturing on there. It is a more vertical profile than typical. Typically, 8Ks are rigged back a little bit more, but nonetheless, this takes standard AR grips, and you can toss this guy out for your favorite off-the-shelf grip if you'd like. So, enhanced meh, trigger guard here. I believe this would probably be mil spec as well, and you could probably also toss us out for your favorite, though I do like it as is. We've got ambi sling swivel or sling loops. The whole idea behind the A3 or the 416A5 was to be a more ambidextrous gun, which this guy is. We've got Starting with the magazine release, this super cool, like look at all that going on there. I love that, all that mechanical crisscrossing sections of components. That's pretty cool. So that guy's in there. On that side, we've got a ambi bolt release. So this one, per, first of all, there's a big shelf above and below these controls so you don't accidentally actuate them. Really oversized paddle bolt release there, which is kind of cool. And then on this side, we'll get to this little guy right in a second. We've got the ambi selectors though here's the thing that'll blow most guys mind that are <clears throat> ar guys so it's 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 uh the hammer's cocked gonna pull this trigger which is <clears throat> while i'm doing this here a little bit of take up firm wall nice crisp break no over travel and uh <clears throat> there you go that's that so boom let's try that again boom there we go a little, a little more direct with it. Um, <clears throat> this you can't do on normal AR-15s. This is the mind-blowing aspect. You can't, for some reason, you can't drop the safety on a dropped hammer. You always have to cock the hammer first, basically creating a live gun, and and then put the safety on, which is kind of weird. So I'm glad that HK figured that out, and that's that's actually really nice. So then we've got this guy right here. This thing is the coolest thing, and I literally dreamt about this thing for years after I saw pictures and then waited like almost two years to get this gun because HK sucks at shipping out civilian guns lots of times. Anyways, this is, I think, an ingenious bolt catch and release system that every other gun should probably copy because it's better than the other systems out there, in my opinion, which counts for something on this channel. <laughs> and so I guess charging handle, basic or fair, little, little bit of an extended latch there, which is nice, and apparently you can flip it from side to side for ambiness. So, Pull it back, this pushes up, and you've got yourself 
a retained bolt. Then a little bit of pressure and boom, she's closed. So the reason, apart from the fact that this is just really slick and nice, uh, is that it's really easy to actuate and it's very different from your mag control. So you this where you're pushing in, lots of other ambidextrous mag release systems on AR-15s and other guns, they've got you know another latch that's kind of up here that you, that's difficult to push down, or you push something up over here, whatever. Uh, a lot of them don't function like this and I really like that this is a very different motion. You're either like lifting your finger up or pushing your finger down and then the mag release you're pushing in. So I just really like that distinction. You're not going to accidentally hit the wrong control when you're in panic mode. So anyways, I do believe you can swap different triggers in here maybe. Maybe. I'll do a disassembly video and I'll show you the bolt carrier because there's a difference with the bolt carrier. It's got this interesting hammer safety stop thing. I'm not sure if you can just toss regular AR triggers in there. Though Geisley does make an ungodly expensive one. Um, but when you put that in there, you also lose the ability to drop the safety on a dropped hammer. So you kind of lose that cool feature. Um, the factory trigger is really good. I don't think you need to change it. I'm not planning to change mine unless someone sends me this Geisley that I can play with. But for like 640 bucks Canadian, I'm not going to spend that on a trigger when the factory one is great and has this cool feature. So moving on. That's pretty much it for this oh, flared mag wall, which is now in keeping with typical uh, mil spec dimensions. So you can use all your P mags and all that kind of stuff. The mag that came with the gun is a cute little five round marked magazine, which is very high quality and pointless. So we will toss in a actual 30 round, but still pin to five because Canada mag. This is by Hector and Cox. So we're keeping with all the HK goodness, but now our AR looks like a an AR that's extra scary with the big pointless mag in Canada. Anyways, moving forward, your stupid H key stock, which otherwise is really cool, and I wish just wish this was M lock. But uh, H key decided to be interesting and do their own thing for the figured out or the, the the industry assumed a reason that they wanted to control the quality of the attachments. Therefore, they made this wonky little H key system, which is like key mod, but not key mod. Key mod doesn't actually work. Anyways, I figure they'll probably get with M-Lock soon enough. Otherwise, you've got pick top and bottom, and a really slick, this handguard comes off really easily, exposing the gas system, which is easy to clean. I'll show that in a separate disassembly video. I'll just keep trucking here with the actual features. So, flip up sights with HK. These are super nice. Your front one is there's a post. That's, that's nice. It's got a pin that keeps it, or a, a bolt that keeps it locked in place. The rear one, however, has this cool little sliding mechanism. You slide out and you just lift the, the, the sight off, which is pretty cool. It's elevation adjustable. You just pull up and twist this little peep sight. Uh, windage is over there. And, oh, this little bugger. Okay, so not actually a bugger. This is a Bruger, a Bruger and Tomet, and it is a, their two chamber break. Bruger and Tomet is a Swiss manufacturer and their 15 by one metric thread pitch matches the factory thread pitch you get on these guns, at least the European ones. So the cool thing about this is I get to use their cool, awesome looking blast deflector. So again, this is a blast deflector. It's all hollow inside in Canada. Suppressors are the only band safety device, but I digress. Still looks cool and it chucks the concussion down range instead of at your buddies. So that's the reason for, for that. It comes with a standard kind of A2 birdcage system, but Oh, what else? Grenade lug, grenade launcher lug for all those commandos out there that want to launch grenades. Well, you need to have a grenade launcher if you want to do that. And this, in fact, is a grenade launcher. GLM HK, 100% legal. I am licensed for this. Um, it's basically the same license as needed for this gun. Um, however, as cool as this thing is, you can actually get the ammo. The ammo is highly no-no. Uh, and banned. So you can only get well, like it's high explosive rounds, lethal rounds, stuff like that you can't get. You can get rubber tipped rounds that you can shoot at cardboard boxes like I did on my Instagram channel. Go check that out. Super low production by the way. At arm.and.gun. That's me. Post daily. Lots of cool stuff. Uh, you get these. You can get chalk marking rounds. Basically you just get the training stuff or the riot control stuff. So don't freak out. Grenade launcher but not actually scary grenade launcher thing if that bothers you. Um, this thing does attach to the pick rail. I'll do a separate video on this later. I'm super excited to have this because it looks awesome on this gun. However, I need some special attachments that I don't have 
because looking at pictures, this thing doesn't just go directly on. There's some little mounting block that locks it on in, in, in between the pick and the launcher. Anyways, we're at 10 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this thing up real quick here. Um, quick little treat. The Rattler. This one has HK adapter sights. Your 416s, I think, used to come with the adapter sights. And then this is just a, a fixed front post. The 416s had a little folding deal that attached to the gas block. And optic plans. I'm going to toss a elk cam. One to four on this guy. However, not a black one. Because of RAL 8000, I want to do the FDE elk can, which is this color. However, this is there, 1.5 to 6, and it's just too big. So... It's a little bit, a little bit too big there. So I'm going to uh, get the one by four, toss it on there. It's going to look awesome. Anyways, that's it for today. Catch you later. Peace.